So we're here at Lenara Connect 2015 in San Francisco. So what has been going on uh, recently at Lenaro? Well, one of the changes we're doing at Lenaro is actually talking about uh, something called Lead Projects, which is a move from doing a lot of interesting work to being really focused on a, country, a, a few very key projects that have high strategic value for our membership and for the community at large. And so we've been talking about that transition now for a while. It's kind of culminating here at Connect. And these are projects like the ARM tools or mobile power management, ARM kernel collaboration, and so on. There's about 10 of these. And the, the other ch key change is one to focus us and our members on those key pieces of technology work that we need to do that will make a big difference for the ARM ecosystem. But also, it gives us the ability to scale. Uh, instead of just having member uh, engineers or, me or member assignees and Lenar employees, with these projects now we can add other what we call member engineers. So these programs are no longer contained by just what the resourcing like, by default Lenar can do. It's now what our members can add to it because these projects are things that they're very interested in and they are willing to participate and give us additional people to fulfill the, the real uh, missions of each of these lead projects. So are you managing the resources and the time and the, the priorities yep. in Lenaro? Yes. So, so there, there was so many different requests, like so many things that yes. people wanted? Yes. It was too much? It was too much. And so what we now have done through the uh, funneling these through the lead projects, you know, the, 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 the people in charge of the lead projects are going to be the, either the director or the manager for the project itself. Um, the project manager and the technical lead. Those three people determine will become the leaders of that lead project. They will determine scope, schedule, and resources. And also when member uh, add uh, engineers to the project, then we can actually add to that and figure out what the impact and the roadmap is and so on and so forth. So there were like hundreds of requests before or something like that? Well, yes. We actually did it through a system um, we called EPICS and we had 107 of those EPICS and then each of those had a whole bunch of additional things underneath those and we were getting additional member requests to, to make changes at a lower level. So what would those requests look like, for example? Um, it was like something like what? Add, surprising enough, we our tool chain, we actually support a, a Windows version of the tool chain for uh, Microsoft Windows and one of the features requested was Python. So Python scripting enablement inside of the tool chain uh, we had it for Linux, but we didn't have it turned on for Windows. It was that kind of request. It turns out that's a, a useful thing to do, so we are going to do that. But it was how that request came to Lenaro was a bit difficult to track, and it wasn't really focused on the, the people who needed to make the, the decision for that project itself. And, and so how does now the, the, the what do you call it, the lead? Uh, lead projects. Lead projects, yep. what do they look like? Is like bigger stuff? They're bigger. bigger. Yeah, bigger. So um, the, the way to think about a lead project is a very large scope. It probably has the need of 20 to 20 plus engineers. Could be as many as 100 or more uh, because of the scale of the work you're trying to do. So it has a big impact on uh, the ecosystem itself, where you're trying to head to. Um, and so instead of saying, well, it's just a tool chain for Windows, as an example, it's, it's really what other ARM tools are needed in order to make all of the, not just the tool chains itself, but also tools like debugging and so on that really help other projects actually do their work. So it's really a, looking at it at a bigger level. These things have a time frame of more like, you know, instead of a few months, they may be six, eight, nine, twelve months or more and then the duration and then from there like any good project would do you break down the work into lower level details to say you know here's the, the pieces we need here's the experts we need to do the work like in an early phase of a project you may need a more architectural help and we did that on the ODP project where we had a uh, need for more architectural people in they came in from member companies um, helped us in that phase and then they were able to not necessarily be dedicated anymore but they could be consulting resources later so are all the engineers in Lenaro and the, the outside companies, the members, they can see all these leading projects on the yes. system? Yes. And they can say, I want to be on that, and they yes. can, they can like say, I'm good for that or for that, and yes. they can switch? Yes, they, they can, can go move around. They yeah. can have an, uh, a mem what we call them, the member engineers can be uh, in for a short period of time, and then they don't necessarily need to be involved at that point, or they can come back in later. They can switch around who they want on the project because it, it just depends on what the needs of the project are. 
And we do that tracking through, uh, uh, we use Jira as our tool to do that. And we have these things called portals. So every Leech project has a portal in Jira, and then that is kind of a dashboard for what's on the project. Who's in charge of it? Who's working on it? What are the key initiatives under that that are being developed? What, are their, what does that roadmap look like for each of those? Because uh, the efficiency of uh, engineers working together is a big, complicated thing. And yeah. uh, there's a lot of companies in the world that have these issues, right? Yes. And uh, is Lenaro one of the best in the world at managing this or not? I think we are, have been good, but we can get better like anybody else. So we'd like to be world class uh, in doing this together on these large projects. And I think um, there's always room for improvement. And I think we realized in working at, at the lower level that it was hard to kind of put all the pieces together in an effective way. So that's why we've made this kind of a, a significant move to lead uh, tra project transition. And what do the engineers think? I think the engineers are very supportive. The members are very supportive. Uh, in a members meeting we had um, uh, recently in China where we brought all our members together, we talked about this in more detail. We had very good support. Um, and so, and we're now seeing here at Connect, we have many of our members saying, how do I find out more? How do I get involved in that project? Tell me, tell me, how do I do that? So we're answering those questions today. Uh, and that'll really be a good kickoff from this point forward. So if Linaro is already kind of uh, quite successful and quite a uh, positive thing, yep. what if suddenly there's a whole bunch of new companies, everybody wants to join with 100 new engineers <laughs> or something? Like, will it be possible? Is it possible to scale to, to just like put everybody in different groups and make it happen faster and stuff? Um, it, it would be a good problem to have. And I actually think we're starting to see that. In fact, the ODP project has a lot of external uh, involvement as well because it's a completely open project. Um, you know, it doesn't. Nothing scales forever. You know, you can't have a thousand engineers easily. Although the Linux kernel is done effectively that way, but they have a different, slightly different model. Um, I, I think that we can scale it to reasonable sizes. I mean. In, in the end, how many people can actually effectively work on a single project, but if you subdivide it well enough, you have key subsystems within that project, and they can be, so I think that's the way you scale it, is you, you have a higher archival structure, you track the dependencies, figure out who's, who needs to do what. So it's certainly very possible, and I think we're, we're up for the challenge. Because Linaro could definitely work faster, right? Yes. This, this, uh, that's a possibility. Yes, absolutely. And uh, so, because there's huge challenges and you kind of know where they are or something, you kind of know what you want to do. Right, right. And the big right. issues. So the, the key is the lead project is about is working on the most important things that are the biggest, in, the biggest impact right now. And those will change over time. So when we finish a lead project, we'll add another one. But the key is to have a, the right number of lead projects and underneath that, the right number of people working on it. So we think the right number for right now, given our membership, is probably in the range of 10 to 15 lead projects. And then as those finish, we'll add new ones or we'll evolve to another phase of that project, right, once we finish a, sing a first phase. 